Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul's United Church of Christ. I am Pastor Liz, and it is so good to have you with us this morning. If you are visiting us, welcome. It is our hope and our prayer that you experience God in this time together. So today we are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. So happy anniversary, happy birthday. June is a beautiful, wonderful month for weddings. And so it is in our church as well. Celebrating anniversaries this month, Michael and Heather Heinrich, Coleman and Linda Smith, Arnie and Hildy Lauber, Dale and Sandy Volkening, Russ and Char Gould, Fred and Karen Volman, Charles and Dorothy Lavolt, Chuck and Karen Smith. And today, celebrating an anniversary, Chris and Cindy Heinrich, and today again, Jeff and Christy Volkening, and tomorrow, Bill and Karen Snyder. Happy anniversary. We also are celebrating birthdays, and we are going to sing our happy birthday song for Kelly Cowan, Amaya Rowe, Marsha Claybrook, Judy Reimer, Ginny Mersewick, Mia Berna, Kenneth Raby, Bonnie Rorson, Arlene Huber, Vivian Schultz, Chuck Smith, Myron Meglin, Dave Berna, Herman Volkening, and Joy Zweifel. <laughs> Cause us to withdraw in pain. May 
pray a prayer of invocation. Holy One who calls us into community and invites us to welcome your prophets and messengers, let us experience your welcome to us. Gathered in various places, but joined in this moment, show us that we are beloved and honored in your presence and in this community. Show us how to put our resources at the service of all. Help us know that the cup of water given in your name nourishes the one who gives and the one who receives. Satisfy our thirst to know your presence here and now. Amen. We come to the time in our worship where we bring our confession before God, our reflection. I ask you, invite you to read aloud the words in bold. God of all, you call us into obedience to the ways of life and holiness, to honor your image in all whom we meet. Forgive us when we ration your welcome to a very few. God of abundance, you call us to stop clinging to things, to trust in your goodness, and to provide all we need. Forgive us when we grasp and hoard and do not share. God of hope, you call us to imagine a future kingdom where all find a place at the table, a safe and joyful welcome to neighbors, children, and creation. Forgive us when we stop short of your vision of your world of mercy and justice for all. Let us take a moment of silent reflection and confession before God. Holy One, who is still speaking through our words, help us to hear your assurance in the peace we share together. You will always welcome us by name. Amen. This week, June 25th, we, as a denomination, celebrated our church's anniversary, 63 years of the United Church of Christ. This Sunday is also open and affirming Sunday in the United Church of Christ, and we celebrate our open and affirming inclusive welcome to all God's people. We celebrate our LGBTQ brothers and sisters and the work we do together. We are going to read together the United Church of Christ Statement of Faith. So I invite us now, um, should you choose to read it out loud or should you choose to just listen? And um, I invite you to, to ponder, to wonder on the power of the gospel and the message that our denomination um, believes. The founders of the United Church of Christ truly believed that the Church of Jesus Christ is one, bringing together in a single body people of all nations, tongues, and races. Human limitations and human conflicts repeatedly fracture the Church into many groups, but those who labored to create the UCC profoundly believed that the central calling of the Church of Jesus Christ is unity, which is a gift of God. The union of the Congregational Churches and the Evangelical and Reformed Church is a step towards the fulfillment of Christ's prayer in the Gospel of John, that they may all be one. For the United Church of Christ, that vision remains an ongoing challenge. The Statement of Faith attempts to articulate the faith of the whole church, 
Given the diversity and dynamic mix of traditions and ethnic groups in the United Church of Christ, this is difficult, yet it has endured and evolved. Let us read together our statement of faith. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the world into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. Matthew 10, verses 40 through 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Will you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In this passage from Matthew that Allison read, Jesus is wrapping up his instructions to the disciples before he sends them out to minister to the people. Jesus says a lot about welcome in these verses. Yes, the disciples will encounter welcome, hospitality, in their work of healing and helping. They will experience the joy of discipleship. But just before this passage in Matthew, Jesus lays out some pretty harsh realities of what they will also encounter. How this work of the gospel, of being disciples out in the world, will challenge them and even hurt them. Jesus tells them that they will not be welcomed everywhere. They can expect to experience the same hostility Jesus often does. They can expect to encounter persecution and trials. They need also be prepared for painful division within families and to be willing to put Jesus' mission above family loyalties. So the passage Allison read follows these harsh realities of discipleship, these costs of discipleship. The work of justice on behalf of the oppressed, the silenced, and the suffering will be hard work, and it will also be life-changing work for them and for those they meet. Jesus tells the disciples, when someone welcomes you, they welcome me. When you go out as prophets in my name to do the work of the gospel and someone welcomes you, 
they welcome me. If we take Jesus' words to heart, it's kind of astonishing what he's saying. When you go out into the world and do the work of the gospel, the work of the church, when you go out to heal and restore, you are the presence of Christ. Today we celebrate the 63rd anniversary of our denomination, the United Church of Christ. 63 years of a united and uniting church being Christ's presence in the world, demonstrating an extravagant welcome, doing the hard, harsh work of discipleship, serving and supporting causes of justice and dignity for all. But the story of our discipleship is much older than 63 years. There's a great gem on the UCC website called UCC Firsts. Today, we'll read some of these justice work achievements, achievements of the four founding denominations of the United Church of Christ. We'll read these moments with pride and thanksgiving but I wonder if we can also imagine, honor what it was like for our church ancestors in the midst of their work. All these years later, we can celebrate the joys of their discipleship, but let us also remember that there was cost. Here are just a few UCC firsts, discipleship that changed the world and manifested God's extravagant love for all. Seeking spiritual freedom, forebearers of the United Church of Christ prepare to leave Europe for the new world. Later generations know them as pilgrims. Their pastor, John Robinson, urges them as they depart to keep their minds and hearts open to new ways. A young member of the Old South Congregation, Phyllis Wheatley becomes the first published African-American author. Poems on various subjects is a sensation and Wheatley gains her freedom from slavery soon after. Modern African-American poet Alice Walker says of her, she kept alive in so many of our ancestors, the notion of song. Lemuel Haynes is the first African-American ordained by a Protestant denomination. In 1776, in the midst of the fight for liberty in which he enlists as a soldier, he writes a defense of the liberation of African-Americans from slavery titled Liberty Further Extended. Antoinette Brown is the first woman since New Testament times ordained as a Christian minister, and perhaps the first woman in history elected to serve a Christian congregation as pastor. At her ordination, a friend, Methodist minister Luther Lee, defends a woman's right to preach the gospel. Evangelical and Reformed theologian Reinhold Niebuhr preaches a sermon that introduces the world to the now famous serenity prayer. God give us grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed, courage to change the things that should be changed, and the wisdom to distinguish the one from the other. The UCC is born. The new community embraces a rich variety of spiritual traditions and embraces believers of African, Asian, Pacific, Latin American, Native American, and European descent. The UCC's Golden Gate Association ordains the first openly gay person as a minister in a historic Protestant denomination, the Reverend William R. Johnson. In the following three decades, the UCC's General Synod urges equal rights for LGBTQ citizens. On July 4th, 2005, 
the General Synod overwhelmingly passes a resolution supporting same-gender marriage equality. UCC General, General Minister and President John Thomas says that the Synod has acted courageously to declare freedom, affirming marriage equality, affirming the civil rights of same-gender couples. Moments of uniting, moments of justice and healing, moments of the kingdom of heaven manifested right here and now. Jesus says, when they welcome you, they welcome me. What a responsibility before us. But we have each other and we have the power and love of God with us guiding us. I pray for strength and renewed passion for all of us to continue the uniting work of our church ancestors. May we humbly and bravely answer God's call to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be servants in the service of others, and to proclaim the gospel to all the world. Amen. Thank you. to the time in our worship where we share the prayers of this community. I invite you to be in the spirit of prayer. God, you call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, 
to be prophets of welcome, extravagant welcome that manifests your extravagant love. Send your Holy Spirit to bind us together so that we may be a uniting church, embodying your love for the world. You invite us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. So, loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our prayers to you this morning. We give thanks for the work of the United Church of Christ. Help us to hear your call to be prophets of welcome and continue your kingdom building work. We give thanks for the anniversaries and birthdays celebrated this month. We ask your blessing on each and every person, and we thank you for the blessing they are to us. We pray today for all the medical professionals, first responders, chaplains, extending hospitality and care at the cost of their own health and safety. We pray for communities struggling with increased COVID-19 cases. God, for those with the virus, for their families, we pray for mercy and healing. For all those working for peace with integrity and professionalism, for all those we ask to keep us safe, we pray bring protection and peace. We pray for school leaders who are making decisions about what reopening will look like in the fall. Bring wisdom and help us offer grace. We pray for our children, for all children. Way making God, we pray for your healing, your mercy, your care, and your strength. We pray for Jude and his family on the death of his dad. For Sue, Mimi, Nancy, Norma, Tina, Bill and Naomi, Jeanette, Kathy, JR, Jim, Donna, Becky, Rachel, Joe, Eric, Danielle, Christy, Kate, Brandon, Bradley. God, we thank you for the years of marriage celebrated today. We lift up 52 years for Bill and Karen, and they offer joy and thanksgiving for the happy life and blessings you have given them. God, you know the desires of our heart, and you know that there are prayers in us that are not named aloud. Hear now our silent prayers. Faithful God, your love stands firm from generation to generation. Your mercy is always abundant. Give us open and understanding hearts that having heard your word, we may seek Christ's presence in all whom we meet. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
We know the reward of God's welcome. We sing of God's steadfast love continually. Now, gathered here as prophets of welcome, we respond to what God has done. We give our gifts of tithes and offerings in the certain hope that God's welcome will continue in the ministry we offer. Let us sing our hymn of praise. the prayer of dedication together. Welcoming one, bless these gifts with your spirit. Transform these gifts into the balm that your world needs. In these gifts, may we welcome in a new world of love. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is a very beloved and popular hymn of the United Church of Christ. Let us sing. And now, friends, whoever wel God says, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. Quench our thirst for love. Satisfy our need to be known. Assure us, God, that we are indeed prophets of welcome. Let us go to proclaim this peace in God's name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go in peace. <laughs>